Governor Mark Dayton is considering issuing an executive order that would allow daycare providers in the state to vote on whether or not they would like to be unionized. A hearing is scheduled on the issue Thursday night prior to this taping. Co-chair of that hearing, Senator Mike Perry, joins me now to discuss the issue and a little bit about your expectations. Thanks for joining us today. Well, thank you. It's great to be here again. Let's begin with the effort to unionize daycares. It's gained a lot of traction nationally since 2006, and 14 states currently have unionized daycares. Should Minnesota, in your opinion, follow this example? Well, Julie, I don't, I, you know, I, first of all, I, I think the, uh, think the governor is overstepping his bounds here. I, you know, I'm, and I've, I've made it clear that I want the daycare providers to have an avenue to speak. I, you know, it, it appears in the outset that the governor is listening more to the unions than he is to the citizens of the state, and, and, and I'm concerned about that. And I've had daycare providers uh, through emails and phone calls and personal contacts say, we don't need this. We don't want it, matter of fact, because we have what we want now. We're licensed. We, we follow those laws to be licensed. We control our own destiny. We have our own great benefits. We know when we're going to work, how long we're going to work, and we know how many children we're able to have within our uh, facility. So uh, I'm being told there is no need for this. So working off of that, backers of this this provision do say that unions could result in better care for kids and level the playing field for providers, daycare providers, who deal with state regulators. Are these, in your opinion, legitimate concerns that could move this issue forward? Well, I don't, at this point, uh, I, I don't believe there is. What I see this as is another two point, or, uh, $214 million in the coffers of the union to use the money how they want. And you, you take that kind of union dues from 11,000 uh, licensed uh, daycare providers right now, they're going to pass that along to the uh, citizens, their clients. And we've already heard uh, loudly throughout talk radio in this state that the, uh, the clients, the, the families that use daycare providers will not pay for that. Uh, they're struggling right now with the economy the way it is. And why would we put more burdens on an a, a independent contractor, a, an entrepreneur, if you want to call them that, the daycare provider, uh, by forcing them to join a union? It's not right. And, and uh, we hope that uh, at the committee uh, hearing that the governor will get the message loud and clear that the daycare providers do not want this. So let's talk a little bit about daycare t um, tuition, for lack of a better word. According to a study released just this year by the National Association of Child Care Resource and Referral Agencies, Minnesota's ranked fifth in the nation in least affordable child care. Now, it is important to note that when they say least affordable, it doesn't mean that the child care costs in the state are the most expensive. It's based on the cost of care in relation to family income. So taking the union issue out of this picture entirely, do you think this, this per particular tuition issue is worthy of some legislative action or at least a closer look? Well, I don't think so. You know, we're, we're in the mode to get keep government out of our personal lives. That's number one. We, the government shouldn't be uh, moving any closer to this than they have with the licensure. I think those that go through and are licensed, the government has done its, its duty. You know, we keep doing this and all, uh, you know, unionizing and pushing this extra expense. What you're going to find is these licensed day daycare providers will go away. And now we're going to have a situation, which might be a good thing, where the grandparents, the brothers and the sisters, the aunts and the uncles are going to start taking these children in and extras, the neighbors. And then what kind of uh, licensing would we have? We wouldn't have anything. At least we have a start now. We don't need to move any further to put a bigger burden on those daycare providers. Okay, so Senator, let's talk a little bit about Thursday night's hearing. It is difficult to discuss things that haven't taken place yet, but what is your expectation? Well, I expect a large turnout. We've been getting a lot of phone calls uh, for the meeting. Uh, I expect some, uh, we're, we're going to make sure, Senator Han and I are co-chairing this, we're going to make sure that it is handled in a very uh, respectful manner. We want to hear from the, the daycare providers. We want to hear from both sides. Uh, we have sent a letter uh, inviting the governor and his staff to be present at the meeting. Uh, they, they're more than happy to be at the table with us to hear the kind of testimony that we expect for the uh, committee hearing. Any response to that letter? 
Uh, as of uh, this time, no. And on that note, Senator Perry, thanks for joining us. We appreciate your time today. Thank you, Julie. It was great being here.